Hi everybody, it is Thursday, May 7th, and today we are gonna be talking about something that you guys have been working on learning about over the course of the last few days in your section in your book about the properties of matter. And you've learned a lot about several properties of matter. You've learned that they have weight, they have mass, they have density. And today we're gonna to be focused mainly on the idea that everything has some sort of density. Now when we're talking about density, we're talking about how tightly packed together particles are. And those particles usually are what we refer to as molecules. Molecules are what atoms form, and molecules are what all things in the whole universe are made of. Remember earlier we talked about those 118 ingredients that everything is made of, and those 118 ingredients join together in different ways to form molecules, and those molecules form every single thing around us. So before we start today, there are three things that you guys are gonna need. If you read the directions on Edlio, you already should have printed out three papers or kind of set up your science journal to look like these if you can't print from your printer. So the first one you should have printed out looks like this. It is called Exploring Density, and there's two squares at the top. The second one that you should have printed out looks like this and it has a whole bunch of squares on it with the names of different liquids up at the top of each square. And then finally, the last one you should have printed looks like this. It's called Exploring Density, and it has a large, tall cylinder with 11 segments to it. So these are the three pages that you should have right now. If you don't have these, you need to hit pause on the video, and you need to go to my Edlio page, print them out, or grab your journal and kind of set it up so that you can follow along and do the assignment because these will be going into your journal as part of your science grade for chapter seven. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. So we're gonna start with talking about the idea of what density really means. And if you see right here behind me, I've got two squares drawn. The first one at the top says more dense and the one underneath it says less dense. Now, I think when you look at these, it's fairly self-explanatory. The top one up here has a whole bunch of particles that are very tightly packed together. There is not a lot of room in between those particles. They're almost touching. But the one down here, the particles are really far apart. There's a lot of room for more things to fit. So when we're talking about density in this case, what we're mostly talking about today is how much something is packed together. And we're gonna be doing a little bit of a lab today where you are going to be making some calculations first. And then after that, you're gonna make a prediction about what you think uh, several liquids would stack as if they were piled up in a glass cylinder. Which ones would be more dense and which ones would be less dense? So the very first thing I'd like you to do today is we are going to start, and you're gonna start first of all simply by creating a very simple model just like the one on the whiteboard behind me. On this side, I'd like you to draw a picture of particles that are highly dense, and on this side, I'd like you to draw a picture of low density. So what those would really be would be right up here, you'd be pretty much reproducing what's here behind me. So it's just the idea to remind yourself that if something is very dense, the particles are packed tightly, and if it's not as dense, they're much less pa tightly packed. Now, if you look here on your paper also, the second thing here says, um, now that you've seen the liquid substances we'll be stacking today, which one do you think will be the most dense? Now, on the paper that has all of the squares on it that looks like this, you'll notice that there are 10 different liquids. There's everything from water to rubbing alcohol to dish soap to baby oil to honey to vegetable oil, all kinds of things here. Now, what I would like you to take a second and do, and you can hit the pause button if you'd like to, I'd like you just to read to yourself all 10 of these things here, and I'd like you to make just a quick prediction before we do any work with this. I'd like you, first of all, on your paper, right here at the beginning, I'd like you to start by writing down which of those liquids do you think is going to be the most dense and what is your experience with that liquid that makes you think that? Why do you think that one is the most dense? And then, which one do you think will be the least dense? And why do you think that? Is there some experience you've had with that liquid before? Do you know a little bit about it? Maybe you have an idea about why you would make that prediction. Now then, right below that, it says, 
which of these substances do you think is going to be at the bottom of the column? Now what we're gonna do today is we're gonna be stacking some liquids in a glass column. And I'd like you to predict, do you think the ones that are more dense or less dense are going to be the ones that are down at the bottom of the cylinder? And you're gonna put that right here, most dense or least dense, all right? So take a moment, pause the video, and I'd like you to go ahead and finish this one and you're going to be filling out all the blanks here. And then, when you're done with the last blank, you can hit play again and we'll continue. All right, so now that you've filled this in and you have all of your answers and your predictions here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna kind of help ourselves make a more educated guess today. We're gonna kind of be creating a hypothesis of which liquids we think are going to be the most dense and which ones are going to be the least dense based on some math. So the other thing that you're gonna to need today, and if you read the directions on Edleo, the other thing you're gonna need in just a second is a calculator. So if you don't have one handy, quickly grab one, and then um, pause and come back if you need to. But if you read the directions, you probably have a calculator with you already. So what we're gonna be doing today is messing around with a math mathematical formula that you'll use a lot more when you're in middle school and high school. But today I'm gonna to introduce you to this formula a little bit so that you have this kind of tucked in the back of your head for later on when you start getting into more complicated uh, physics when you get into uh, high school. So what we're gonna be working with today is the idea that density is a mathematical formula. And the mathematical formula is a division problem. It's a very easy division problem. And the division problem is mass divided by volume. And you can see that the M obviously stands for math and the V obviously stands for volume. So they're making it easy for you today. Now, if you look on your paper here, you'll notice that same formula is right here up at the top of your page. So D for density equals mass divided by volume. Now, if you want to on your paper, you can do what I did. I put or M divided by V, and that way you can remember the formula here with just the letter representations of mass and volume. Okay, so you'll notice here on this paper that there are a number of things as well. Now, if you look right here up at the top, the very first box is water. Now, just like astronomical units where we use the Earth as the measure of the distance of everything in our solar system, with density, water is used as the measure of all other densities. And water is expressed as the measure of its grams divided by its milliliters. So mass is expressed in grams because mass is a kind of weight. Volume is expressed in milliliters. So remember, volume is how much something takes up of space. So today, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be using this mathematical formula as well as the numbers at the top of each square to calculate the density of each of the liquids on this page. Now, I started with water because if you notice, water is 6.8 grams per 6.8 milliliters. So for every 6.8 milliliters of water, it weighs 6.8 grams. So it's exactly the density would be one gram per milliliter. And that's how it's expressed here. And that's how we are gonna be expressing density for these things. Now, what, let's go ahead and just go to the next one over here though. This is the lamp oil. Now, lamp oil has a mass of 3.2 grams for every 4.0 milliliters. So what we're gonna do is we are gonna take our calculator and we are going to say that this measure will be calculated 3.2 divided by 4.0. So on my paper right here, I'm going to be putting 3.2 divided by 4.0. And I'm gonna write that down right here in my square like that so I have my problem. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the calculation. So I'm gonna grab my calculator here, I'm gonna turn it on and I'm gonna say 3.2 divided by four or 4.0. You could just put four too, because obviously the zero has no value. Now what I get when I do that calculation is a very small number and it's 0 0.8. My decimal is very tiny, but 0 0.8 is my density. So it is 0 0.8 grams 
per milliliter. So this is what my calculation looks like. 3.2 divided by 4.0 because mass goes on top and volume goes on the bottom. And then when I calculated it with my calculator, I got 0 0.8 grams per milliliter. And that is the density. So you can see since water is one gram per milliliter and lamp oil is 0.8 grams per milliliter, well, the lamp oil is actually a little less dense than water. So it's quite thin compared to water. Now, what I'd like you to do is this. The next thing you're going to do is I'd like you to pause the video. And I'd like you to take a few minutes and go through each one of these. And I'd like you to please calculate the density using your calculator, do the division problems, make sure to write down the problem here. And then when you write down the answer, express it in grams per milliliter. So we know you're not talking about miles or something like that. We wanna know that this, was a, this is a density measurement, okay? So go ahead and pause, work all these out, and then hit play again. Okay, so now you should have all of your mathematical calculations done here. And what I'd like you to do now is this. Take a look at all of your numbers that you got on this page. You should have this whole thing filled out and you should have 10 different grams per milliliter measures on here. Now I'd like you to take a look at these and look to see which ones have higher numbers. Because the higher the number is, the more dense it is, the more tightly packed the particles are. And this is the next thing that you're going to do. The next thing you're gonna do is you are gonna take this paper and you'll notice that it is already designed here as a stacked cylinder. Now, you made a prediction earlier as far as which liquids you think are the most dense and the least dense and which ones you think would be at the bottom. Would the most dense liquids be at the bottom or would the most dense liquids be up here at the top of the cylinder? So what I would like you to do right now is this. Take your calculations here and I would like you to make a prediction. I'd like you to write down for each one of these little sections on the cylinder your prediction as to when these liquids are stacked the order in which they will stack. Now, to give you a little preview here, I'm gonna show you just one comparison of two liquids. And I have two liquids in front of me. One's very easy to get. It's called water, all right? If you're quite familiar with that substance. And the other one here is, they always make these jars upside down, the other one is honey. Now, you probably have experience with both of these. And what I'm gonna do right now is kind of show you what a little bit of what you're gonna see today because when two liquids have a different density, they don't mix. And so I'm gonna show you a little bit, just a little clue today as to how maybe this will be going. So I'm gonna start with the honey here and I'm gonna hold up my water here. And I'm just going to go ahead and start squeezing the honey. And I want you to watch what the honey does as it goes in. Now, when it goes in, you probably noticed, I'll do it again, that the honey does not float on top of the water. All the honey I squeezed down into this jar is now resting down on the very bottom of this jar. It's not floating on the top. It's not suspended and floating in the mixture. It is lying on the bottom like a rock. Now, that probably tells you something about its density. So, here's what I'm gonna have you guys do. Go ahead, the video's gonna end in a minute. Go ahead and make your prediction here. And I want you to guess which of the liquids will be at the bottom and then all the way up to the top, which one will be the one that's on the very top surface of the stack of liquids. Now, as soon as you have this finished, if you'd like to color it in to kind of match the color of the various liquids that are gonna be stacked, feel free to do that. And then as soon as you're finished with this, what I would like for you to do is you're, gonna, you're going to be done with this video of me, and you're gonna watch a different video where two scientists are going to be stacking all of the liquids that are here on your paper, and you can see how they actually stack in order according to their density, how tightly packed the particles are in each of these liquid substances.
All right, so good luck. And I look forward to seeing this in your journal to see if you made correct predictions or even if your predictions were close. All right, okay, good luck and have fun watching the video as soon as you're done making your predictions.